Hi, I'm Michael Wilde, this is ZBrush, and today we're going to be looking at the Multimap Exporter and using it to get multiple UDIMs of textures from your sculpt out. Cool, so back when assets didn't have multiple UDIMs, then you used to be able to just get out a texture map, a displacement map, a normal map on the right hand side here. But these days, every single asset I work on has got multiple UDIMs and exporting with this process is slow, monotonous and just borderline the worst. What ZBrush has got is it's got this Z plugin called the Multimap Exporter, which you can find on the Z plugin, Multimap Exporter. And it does, as the name suggests, it exports multiple maps. And so I'm just gonna go through the settings that I use and how you can use it to get out a displacement properly and your other maps. So at the beginning, you can select which maps you wanna get out. I have currently been using displacement at normal for this guy just to get them into Mari, but you can do anything. I could texture, get a texture from polypane, ambient occlusion, cavity, and a V-disp as well. You can also export your mesh at the same time as export, something that I don't use, but it might be handy to you. So to create maps when you've got the settings set up, you just press this button, but we're gonna go through the settings before doing that. Here we've got this subtools button. You can push this on to create maps from multiple subtools that are showing, but I'm just wanting to get from this sculpt that I've done. Here you can choose the map size, so 1K, 2K, 4K. You can also type in, so you can click on those, or you can type in, say, 8K if you wanna get anything higher. This flip V is important to have on. So basically ZBrush has this funky thing where the things you export are flipped vertically. So just having this on, it flips it the right way around so that when you get it into your texturing package or your renderer, it is the correct way. It's just a kind of work around that annoying little quirk. So if you open up your export options, then you can change the options for individual maps and also the naming conventions. So let's look at the naming conventions by clicking on file names. It's gonna bring up this little UI. So here I want both to be .tiff. You can click that and change it, but I want my 16-bit and my 8-bit to be .tiff. Then you can change the naming convention of the individual maps. So your displacement, your vector map. So if you wanna change that, so for example, I wanna change this to ZDisp instead of DISP so I can differentiate between the displacement I make and a displacement I've sculpted. You can just do that and then press enter. It's important to have something at the end, so an underscore or a dot, so that the next thing, your UDIM tile, is separated from it so that a texturing package can read it properly. To set up that UDIM process, you can click here till you find the UDIM one, and that will just name each patch or tile or whatever you want to call it, UDIM correctly, so it's 1001, 1002, and that will come after this underscore. So yeah, I can click OK with that because I'm happy with that. Now if I go back, let's have a look at the individual settings. So let's open up displacement. So I've got this set to the lowest subdivision level, which is what I wanted to get my displacement from. You can set it higher if you just want to get fine detail, for example. You can set it to one or two below your max subdivision level, but I've got this set to one. Here you can turn on adaptive. This supposedly gives you a more accurate map, but it always, in my experience, has taken so long, so I don't ever really use it. If I'm going high enough and I've got high enough texture resolution, I don't find that I feel I need it, but it's something that you could experiment with if you wanna see if you get a better result. So smooth UV might be turned on, I always turn that off. The midpoint, this might be set to zero by default. So I am using a 32-bit map, and here it says that for 32-bit, the best result is zero, but I set it to 0.5 just so that mid gray is no displacement, and then dark in my map is gonna be pushing in, and white is gonna be pushing out just makes it a lot easier to visualize to make sure the map is correct. And when I import that into Mari, then it's easy to play with. If you set it to zero when you want to see that, then you could just lift that up in Nuke by 0.5 or in another software or whatever. It's also important that whatever your mid value is, your renderer uses the same one or you set your renderer up to use the same one. So I've been rendering this in Arnold at the moment and I think by default that's set to zero. So I've had to change the Arnold displacement to 0.5, which was super easy, but it's just something to be aware of. So underneath, I've got this 32-bit option. So I've got that turned on and I've got it set to EXR as well. So 32-bit will just give me a lot more information and there won't be any banding or anything like that. So that's super important when doing displacements. And three channels, I've got that turned on. If you turn that off, it's not a huge, it's not gonna break your textures or anything. It just means that your displacement will be red. This just makes it easier to visualize by default when I import it straight away into my texturing program. So scale, I've got set to one. I would always recommend having it set to one if you're using 32-bit, if you just import that, it might look really low in Mari, but that will give you the exact right amount of displacement. And yeah, I wouldn't change that. And same with intensity, I don't change that either. These 16-bit things I am gonna ignore as well, don't ever use those. 
Vector displacement, I'm not going to go through that because I don't personally use it myself. So I don't know the best setup for that. I'm sure there's loads on Google. Um, so yeah, I'm going to plead the fifth on that. And we're going to go straight to normal map. Normal map, I've got it set to subdivision one again. I could set this higher if I just wanted to get the higher fidelity. I think by default, tangent is turned off. So it'll give you world space normals. Uh, super important to make sure you've got tangent space normals. Adaptive, again, you can have that on. It's going to take a lot longer, so I keep that turned off. Smooth UVs off again. And I've got smooth low-res normals on. I think my first export on this didn't have that on, and it gave me like faster normals, so I just turned that on. And then you can flip any of these if you know, for example, the blue channel came out incorrectly, so I ended up inverting that inside of Mari myself, but I could just flip them if your normal map looks like it's pushing in instead of pushing out it's probably because one of your channels is flipped incorrectly so you can test that in your texturing package and then turn this on so that on export it works correctly so ambient occlusion and cavity are super simple you can adjust the settings to give you different amounts of occlusion or different cavity levels and you can change the blur for example down there on cavity and all that kind of other stuff so these i don't really mess with but you can do you can test with these to give you better results just important to keep it on 16 bits so that it's not 8 bit. That way you won't get banding because these are going to be black and white images. You'll just get more data in these images. And then mesh export, you can choose the subdivision level that it's going to export if you have that on at the top. And then you can also save and load presets. Uh, I think that's super handy. So I've saved this as a preset. Yeah, if I can work out a way, maybe I will save this on a Google Drive for people to download if they want to use it. Uh, but yeah, this is what I've been using and it gives me perfect results in Arnold or any texturing package. So if you're happy with that, all you need to do is you just need to go up here and click create all maps. So I'm going to go to somewhere that I've been exporting. I'm just going to do that here. I'm just going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this exports B3. And then here, just whatever you call this file is going to give it the prefix of that. So I usually just do export underscore and then it's going to call it the name of the map and so on and so forth. If you have, I think before it had, yeah, if I had this, then it would do underscore displace and it would just be a really messy name. So I usually just do export underscore and then go from there. So I'm going to let this work and just show you that it works. Cool. So that's done. It only took four minutes, four and a half minutes, which is pretty good considering that was five UDIMs, all 8K um, on a 30 million poly asset. If I bring those over, we can just have a look at those just to make sure they've gone out correctly. So this is the normal. You can see I've got the detail there. That looks right. And displacement. So one thing, a little quirk I found with displacements, I don't know if it's just because I'm working with 8K, but it does this little naming convention where the UDIM, it puts in the size as well with the UDIM. Um, I haven't typed that in in the naming convention section. So what I have to do is I just have to go in by hand and just remove those for Mari or another piece of software to pick it up correctly. Slightly annoying, but I mean, it takes maybe 10, 15 seconds. Cool, so that about sums that up. I hope this helps your sculpting process. Getting maps out of ZBrush can be a little bit fiddly at times, so that's why I wanted to make this for anybody that's struggling. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them below. If you've got any other topics you'd like covered, again, leave it below. And I've been Michael Wilde, this has been ZBrush, and take it easy. Cheers.